Sandwich card tricks have been around for ages, with the effect being that the selected card is found sandwiched between two other cards. For me, it's one of the first types of card tricks that I ever learned, I think. Although my first time performing went something like this. Here we go, guys. We first need a card uh, selection, and it's this one. Remember it, it's 10 of spades. And we're going to need help from my two aces, this, these two. And then we'll take your card, and then I will lose it in the deck somewhere, like this. And then we're going to take the two aces, and we'll will show you the two aces, there's nothing there. And then I will give the deck a cut, and you'll see the card after I do the snap. You'll see the card will appear. Oh, there's a card between the, to the two aces, and it appeared to be the ten of spades. Thank you. Not that there's anything wrong with that level of performance, it just lacks a little bit of pizzazz. We all need a little bit of pizzazz in our magic, don't we? So today I'll be sharing with you three routines that I love using with the sandwich effect. Before I share anything else with you, here is the bare bones of a sandwich. We have two cards that we generally have selected that help find the spectator's card, which are the, the, you know, the ends of the sandwich, and we have a card selected, the four of hearts in this case. We leave the four of hearts on top, grab a pinky break right underneath it, and we're pretty much showing the two aces going on top of the deck, or two of whatever card it is. Now you're gonna lift up from that pinky break, grabbing this pile of three cards while making it seem like it's actually two. You peel off the top card, put it underneath, um, both of these cards, so now the spectator thinks it's a two aces, but in fact uh, one card is hidden. And then you can pretty much do the reveal in any way you want, if you want to, you know, just do something simple as, you know, a shake and a turn, snap, whatever it is, and the card randomly appears, you can do that, you can throw it into the deck. Uh, but that's pretty much the bare bones minimum. So now in this video I'm going to show you how to get into the sandwich position a bit easier, uh, show you a couple different methods on it, and then uh, also show you a couple different ways to reveal the card. So now, we can continue. All right, y'all, so check this out. For those of you who are curious, I'm gonna be using the David Blaine Gatorback playing cards, and they're the shiny color of metallic red. So we're gonna start by first taking the cards right out of the tuck case and giving them a nice little shuffle, maybe something like this, something like this, something like that, and something like this. All right, um, now we're gonna have a card selected as per the usual, as you always see. Boom, let's take this card right here. It happens to be this card. Take a look at it and memorize it. I feel like I've given you plenty of time. Leave it back uh, on the deck and then I'll shuffle it uh, inside. Now here's the problem that I have. Um, I'd like to use new decks of playing cards, or I like to use different decks of playing cards, but the issue is I don't really break in any other playing cards, so any decks that I actually use on camera are all new, so they're a bit more difficult to handle. So here I have two cards. I have the three of hearts and I have the nine of spades. We're gonna try to use these two cards to find your selected card. Your selected card was whatever you're saying it is. I'm gonna riffle through the side of the deck and wherever you say stop, we're gonna try to grab the card at that location. Ready? One, two, three. Oh, here we go, here we go. One card and one card only. What was your card? The king of hearts? Well, check it out. There it is, the king of hearts. All right, guys, so here's the rub. We're gonna start off by having a card selected. Let's say this one right here. It's the ace of diamonds. I'll take it, leave it on top. And now here's my thought process of the method that I used to uh, get my cards to sandwich. Normally when you're doing these sandwich tricks, as I talked about in the bare bones part, is that uh, usually two cards are selected beforehand, and then these two cards are put on top of the deck after the card has already been selected, and then they're shifted around and being shown, and then the card is sandwiched, right? Which seems kind of weird to me. Right, there's nothing wrong with it, but I think in magic, there should be purpose behind every move that you're doing. So the purpose here, it just, there is no purpose, right? So what I wanted to do, I wanted to come up with a different method of picking arbitrary cards to use as the ends of your sandwich. So the way that I did that is I uh, controlled two cards on top of this card. But not only am I doing the control of the two cards on top, I also wanted to see how I can make it seem like the card is being lost in the deck while two cards are being controlled on top. And there are many different ways to do this. I think if you're a beginner, a simple method would be to grab a pinky break, count two cards on the bottom, grab a pinky break here, and then do the double undercut. And all that really is, is you're cutting over half the deck. You're gonna shift this pinky break to your thumb, cut over half the deck like this, align it with the bottom of, that, of the break that you have, cut half this deck, bring it to the top, cut everything above, or sorry, cut everything below this break, Cut that to the top as well. And now you'll see you have two arbitrary cards controlled on top of your card, right? Was your card the Ace of Diamonds? 
Even if it wasn't, let's just say it was. That's how you control two cards on top of your selected card. Now, if you want to make it seem more random like I did in my performance, I did an overhand shuffle or a controlled overhand shuffle. And if you want a more detailed video on that, I did a full master class on the overhand shuffle. You can go ahead and check that out. But uh, the way that this is going to work is you're going to toss over a chunk of playing cards like you would do in a normal overhand shuffle. And now you're going to count two extra cards. So one, two. Once those two cards are counted over, you push the top card back and continue doing the overhand shuffle. Once that's done, you'll see you still have this card here in the back. You're gonna push down and forward, and now you have a break between where you want the top packet to be. So you continue overhand shuffling the rest of the cards until you get to the break, and then you toss the rest of the cards over, and now you have your two random cards on top of your selected card, or on top of the spectator selected card. So once that's there, now I take these two cards and I turn them over and I show them I have two random cards like this. I did it a bit differently in my performance just because I wanted to come a bit closer to the camera, but there's no closer to the camera performance in real life. So I show the cards like this. You can spread out, spread out the cards and it's very easy to get a pinky break now underneath the top card here or underneath the third card because when you come back to square everything up, you just grab that break and you're good to go. So in the, in the guise of um, showing these cards, I have these two random cards. You're spreading out this card as well, squaring everything up. And now you can say, I'm gonna take these two cards. And then at that point, you already grabbed that third card. Nothing, there was nothing extraneous about it. So once you've squared all that up, you've grabbed that extra card. You're going to now peel off the top card as we usually do for all sandwiches. And I want to align it vertically like this, okay? And you'll still see the card back here is what the spectator selected card is. Now that it's aligned, I wanted to come down here and want to riffle through and grab a card because I feel like that's always really cool. It seems plausible, but also very impossible at the same time. And it seems like it's something that could only be done with a lot of practice. So I like to get the spectator involved. I tell them to uh, tell me when to stop. Make sure you're grabbing this very um, with a very strong grip. And the way that I'm grabbing it here, I'm pinching this corner, right? This corner right here with my um, index finger and my thumb here and my middle finger is right on top of the ace of diamonds. So when the time is right, all I'm gonna do is push out the ace of diamonds with my middle finger like this, at this angle, okay? And that's really all I'm doing. So as I'm going through like this, Spectator tells me when to stop, I put the cards here, and I already misaligned with my middle finger, you can already see that. And as I pull out, you can see that there's only one card there, and of course that'll be the selected card. Here we go, my peeps, trick number two. We'll start off by needing two helper cards, and we have the two black aces. You like that You like that shot I did right there? Now we're gonna need a card selected. Let's just dribble through the pack. Let's just say right around here. Take a look and memorize this card, right? So take a look, get that card memorized. Uh, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this card and put it randomly somewhere into the center of the deck. And this time, instead of shuffling it, I'm just gonna, just gonna shove it in there just like this. And boom, look at that, all clean. Uh, what's going to happen is now I'm going to go through the deck like this and I'm going to spread through wherever you say stop. We're going to take these two aces and we're going to put them at that location. Now, if you have no more questions, we can proceed with this trick. So I'm going to keep on going. I'm going to stop right around here. Perfect. We'll take the two aces. I'm going to leave them face up but a bit further out like this. And this is where the magic happens. I can pretty much hand you the deck. And all I want you to do is grip tightly and push these aces right through. Now check this out you'll see on the other side, there's a card. It's rising right through, maybe even a card in a third. We're just gonna take this single card. And if this worked correctly, it should be your card, the Queen of Spades. Boom. Howdy ho, welcome to trick number two's tutorial. We're gonna start, of course, as per the usual, by having a card selected. And uh, oh, look at that, Ace of Diamonds again. Oh. So you have a card selected by a spectator, but you can also use two helper cards that the spectator can select. So let's say the spectator wanted the two red queens, okay? So we're taking the two red queens, we hand them over to the spectator, and I take the Ace of Diamonds. And now as I hand these over to the spectator, tell them to hold it face up. And as I'm gesturing this towards him, again, one thing I, would, I do wanna clarify, this is more of an intermediate level effect. So uh, you wanna get a decent amount of practice before you do this one. So as I'm gesturing and handing these over to the spectator, the Ace of Diamonds or the selected cards on the table face down, typically, you wanna grab a pinky break underneath the top three cards, all right? So you can uh, do the pinky count because it's very easy to do the pinky count when you're gesturing with the other hand towards the spectator. And once they have these queens in their hand, you're gonna take their selected card and you're gonna do the Marlowe tilt, right? So you're gonna push up, right? So there's plenty of gap here. 
and you're going to make it seem like you're inserting this card randomly into the center of the deck, where in actuality you're placing it into the fourth position. So I give a little bit of a struggle because generally cards don't go in super smooth. So I make it seem like I'm doing an actual insert, push that right in there. And then I grab the entire deck like this and I do a quick front riffle or I shift the cards back and forth so it doesn't seem like there's any kind of uh, perception of the cards going down in the back. Right, so that just kind of covers that up. But now we have the Ace of Diamonds in the fourth position from the top. At this point, I'm gonna spread through the deck like this and say I'm gonna, and then I tell the spectator, I'm gonna spread through the deck and ask, and I'm gonna ask you when you want me to stop. Okay, and wherever you say stop, you're gonna take these two queens and put them at that location. As I'm saying this to the spectator, I'm already starting to do a bit of a spread. And the move that's gonna be very vital here is known as the cull. And I have a full tutorial on the cull. I'll put a tutorial link to it in the, in the, in the up here. I'll put it up here. So what you're pretty much doing is you're pushing off one card, one card, and you're pushing off two cards as one, and then you're culling that card. And the way that you're culling, again, like I said, two cards as one, you're taking your middle finger, ring finger, pulling that card back under the cover of these cards here, pulling this back and continuing to go through. And while I do this, I generally make eye contact with the spectator so they don't see, even if, you know, this is not super clean. I rarely ever get the super clean, by the way. So uh, even if this is not super clean, having that eye contact and focusing the attention on these queens really helps. So uh, as you're spreading through, you ask someone to stop, they say here. The card, again, is called to the bottom. So whenever you're doing the spread or whenever you're spreading more cards, you're literally spreading right uh, uh, above that card. So let's say they say stop here. You're gonna pick up these two queens and put them uh, face up, sticking out right here. And now as you close, you're gonna insert this card between the two queens like this. So you're inserting that card between the two queens and squaring everything up, including the queens. And now this is my absolute favorite part. Uh, either they can hold the deck or you can hold the deck. I recommend that you hold the deck, but have them push in both queens and make sure they don't do this like super rapid fire. You want them to kind of build the effect. Ask them to slowly push the queens in. And because of how the card is positioned, you'll see it rise through on the other side, which is really cool. Check that out. And then what I usually like to do, I usually don't just pull it out like I did in my performance. I shift it towards them, spread out the cards and show that there's one card sandwiched between the queens and let them take that card out themselves and they can see that it's their selected card, the Ace of Diamonds. And here we come to our third and final trick. We're gonna start by taking the card out of the tuck case and just one shuffle this time, just one shuffle and one cut. And then we'll have a card selected. Let's say this card right over here. Take a look at it and memorize it. Once you got that memorized, we'll take it and I'll shuffle it into the deck. I know last time I pushed it in, but this time I wanna shuffle it in. I like to go back and forth, all right? Uh, so it's shuffled up. And we're gonna do something similar to what we did last time. Like I was saying, we're gonna take two cards at random. We have the two of hearts and the three of clubs. We're gonna take these cards and I'm going to actually just leave them on the table. And what's, here's the best part. You guys have seen the card spring before, right? The move that looks like this. We're gonna use the card spring to catch the card between these two and it's gonna be freaking awesome. Are you ready? One, two, three. Now you see there's one card caught right in between these cards. And that one card is your selected card, the nine of clubs. Boom. All right, here we go. Real life shuffling this time. This is a real shuffle. We're gonna see if we can find the ace of diamonds to use for our third tutorial in a row. And no, it's not the ace of diamonds. But anyway, we have a card selected. It is the five of hearts. We leave it on top of the deck. And similarly to what I did with the first trick, you're gonna shuffle or you know whatever method you wanna use, get two cards on top of that card. And it's the uh, five hearts, if I remember correctly. So we control two cards on top of the five of hearts. And again, similar sandwich method. Show that over, display this to the spectator, grab those three cards, pinky, whatever, you know, you know what it is. Now uh, I take the two cards out like this and I put them down on the table. Okay, let me adjust my camera. Okay, this lighting isn't great, so you're gonna have to just, just deal with it. But this is the coolest thing ever. Of course, you're gonna need to do you need to know how to do the card spring, but this is the coolest thing ever, okay? Because all you're gonna do is do the card spring on top of these cards and the cards will automatically separate, okay? Just make sure that you're not using a new deck so those cards don't slide everywhere. Uh, let me just square this up. Okay, but all you have to do is a card spring right on top of this. And oh my God, the card literally just, these separate and the card is appears there. And back in the day, I thought this was the coolest thing in the world. All you have to do is put the card down, do the card spring on top of it. The cards separate to reveal the selected card. It is awesome.
there you have it, my peeps. Three sandwich tricks that'll get you lit. That'll get you great reactions. Thanks for spending your time with me. Love you guys. Make sure you check out the Underground Club to support me if you're able to, and I'll see you real soon. Okay, guys, and thanks for watching, and you can check out my, oh my god, wow. Look at that card spring. Suddenly, I have the abilities to handle playing cards like it's nobody's business except mine. Wow. Just incredible. Thanks for watching.